down to our feet. It's great to see you guys back after like a whole week. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. I had a great Thanksgiving. But now we're here in the house of God and we're going to get ready to praise and worship. And I hope you guys are ready to feel God's presence here, okay? So right now what we're going to do, we're going to bow our heads and close our eyes and pray. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us again to come here, God, to your house. I ask you, God, to fill us with our hearts, God. Let us be able to worship and glorify your name, God. Allow this Holy Spirit to come in this place. Make ways here, God. Make your miracles happen here, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Woo.
where you are, why don't we get into a time of worship? Why don't we lift our hands and begin to open up to the Holy Spirit? Begin to tell them, Holy Spirit, I'm here. Come and have your way in my heart. I'm making room for you. Every burden, every struggle, I'm surrendering it at your
invite you to let the Holy Spirit move in you, to just give it all to Jesus, because what you're carrying, what burden you have, what worry you have is not yours. It is not yours, and it's, it's, it's something that's going to take you away from what Jesus has planned for you, from the life that you should be living. take it out and let's bless it before bringing it to the altar. God, I thank you in this evening for allowing us to be here. God, I ask you to bless every cheerful giver in this place. I ask you to bless their families, their jobs, God, that it may be you, that it may be you opening those doors. We give this offering that it may be glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can come up and bring your offerings. And um, I know you all know the announcements and they're the same announcements from every week. But we'll see you guys here. Um, I'm not like telling you guys bye. It kind of sounds like it. But um, we have service, English service at 9 a.m. on Sunday. And then we have our Spanish service at 11.30. Um, and then we'll, see, we'll also, I'm like, I, just like, I haven't done Friday announcements in so long. I was going to tell you guys about the prayer for the men, which is not good. Um, what are the announcements? Okay, it's just those two services. If you guys can um, come to the English service, we're going to have also Pastor Alex. And with that, I give it up to Pastor Alex. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How's everyone doing this Friday evening? Everyone good? Amen. I want you to open your heart this Friday evening, okay? So right there where you are, just, just bow your heads and close your eyes. All right, we're knocking down bows here. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. Why don't we bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray right now that you can soften our hearts. We soften our hearts to your word, Holy Spirit. Right now, we're not going to play defensively. We're not going to fight with you. We're not going to fight with your word. We're not going to fight with what's going to be preached today. We're going to receive everything. We're going to receive your word. In Jesus' name, I pray against anything that is trying to stop the word of God, anything that is trying to stop the move of God, the healing of God, the deliverance of God. In Jesus' name, I pray that you can begin to work right now. In Jesus' name, we receive you today, Holy Spirit. We receive you today. In Jesus' mighty name, we declare victory today. Victory over this service. Victory over this Friday evening. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you so much, God. Amen and amen. Why don't you high-five the person next to you? High-five your friend, your buddy. Give them a hug. You guys can have your seats.
hope everyone's Thanksgiving was great. I had an awesome Thanksgiving. Uh, did you guys eat turkey, by the way? Anyone here eat turkey? Raise your hand if you ate turkey. Amen. Raise your hand if you ate ham. Raise your hand. Mashed potatoes, spaghetti. Who ate tamales? All right. Anyone eat tamales? All right. Wait for Christmas if you ate tamales. You could just you could have just waited for Christmas. But I'm glad you guys had an awesome Thanksgiving. Uh, this is the first service of December, if I'm not mistaken. Woo! Let's worship God for that. Let's give God some praise. I don't know if you guys have thought about it yet, but we're one month away from the new year. Right? This time just flies. Right? I don't know if you guys remember when we were thinking about 2020 and, man, the year was so horrible and the new year is going to be good and I'm going to work out and I'm going to do so many good things. Well, you got one more month to do it. All right? You got one more month. Time flies so much. It flies by fast. But uh, we're here. God is good. I'm glad you're here for this Friday service. I believe God has a word for you. Like every Friday, I want you to soften your heart to receive. Okay? Ask the Holy Spirit, soften my heart. Okay? Everyone say, Holy Spirit, soften my heart. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want to take you to a verse. Matthew 26, verse 41. Matthew 26, verse 41. It says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Okay, watch and pray. Watch and pray so that you won't fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, the title of today's message is called The Seduction of Delilah. Okay, the seduction of Delilah. I want you to turn to four people. Okay, four people. I want you to tell them, stay away from Delilah. Tell four people. Tell four people. Stay away from Delilah. Stay away from Delilah. Amen. My goal tonight is to help you notice. Okay, my goal tonight is to help you notice Things in your life that are leading you down dark paths. Samson, very strong person in the Bible, right? Delilah, pretend like we haven't heard him, right? Delilah, Delilah, right? I'm going to talk about these two characters, real, okay? He was called to defend the people of Israel from their arch enemies, okay? So there was Israel at the time, and their arch enemies were the Philistines. Okay, there's two countries, Israel and the Philistines. God raised up Samson to be a protector for these people against the Philistines. Okay? And since birth, what God did with Samson, he gave Samson's parents instructions. And he told them, you have to raise this boy differently than other people, than, than the rest, okay? He's going to be a Nazarite. Okay, everyone say the word Nazarite with me. Nazarite, right? It sounds like a, like a cool type of name, right? In the Bible, there was a group of people that were named Nazarites. And these people in the Bible... What they were, they were just dedicated to God. They were consecrated. The name meant consecrated ones, right? Which meant that they were set apart from the world. These groups of people, the Nazarites, they set themselves apart from the world. And one of the, one of the ways you were able to notice that, uh, you know, if someone was a Nazarite or not is if they had long hair, Right? So there was different things that they had to do. They had to keep themselves away from anything that was filthy in the world, anything that was going to cause uh, them to, to be defiled, to be uh, filthy. They had to stay away from a bunch of different things, and they had to grow out their hair pretty long, right? So if you wanted to spot a Nazarite in that time, all you had to do is look for a person with very long hair, seven braids of hair, right? And uh, you're okay. You're like, that's a Nazarite. That's a Nazarite. That's a person who's a Nazarite. So Samson in the Bible was a Nazarite. He had to take a vow to live a pure life. His hair was a sign that he was consecrated, that he was holy, okay? That he, that he consecrated himself unto God. It was a sign for everyone else that God was with him, okay? That's who Samson was. But not only that. 
not only, sent, not only was Samson a, 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 a consecrated person, someone who was set aside for God, but we also read in the Bible that Samson was a very strong and powerful person. You think of Samson and you think this very strong person. You think of a superhero almost. You think of someone who is very strong. And he was. He was a mighty man of God with incredible strength. Out of all the people in the Bible, we see him with superhero strength, with superhuman strength. And I'm going to share with you some of the, some of the things that Samson did, right? The, the Bible tells us in, that he, would, he was able to kill lions with his own hands, right? Lion jumped up on him and Nimolo, the lion died because he choked him out and he tear him apart. Okay, this is in Judges 5, 14, 5 to 6. Okay, listen up, listen to this. It says, uh, as they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. Okay, think about, put yourself in his shoes. What would you do? The first thing you do, you, you're like, God, take me home. I'm done. I'm going to die. Or you'd run away or something. But not Samson. Okay, verse 6. The spirit of the Lord came on him powerfully upon him so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands. Okay, Samson was able to tear lions apart. Uh, this, that's pretty cool. That's, that's awesome. Like, that's, that's amazing, right? He was also able to kill 1,000 Philistines. Remember that his arch enemies were the Philistines. 1,000 of them on his own. That was him, right? This is in Judges 15, 14 to 15. It says, the Philistines came toward him shouting. The spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. Okay, the ropes on his arm became like sharp flax. Okay, verse 15, finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey, he grabbed it and he struck down a thousand men. Okay, so this guy, you know, the Philistines are coming at him full, full speed. They have their armor, they have their spears, they have everything with them. And all Samson had, he found a jawbone of a donkey, a dead donkey, right? He got the jawbone, and with that jawbone, he killed a thousand Philistines. That's, that's pretty cool if you, if you, you know, if you considering all things, right? That's awesome. That's, it's display of his strength, right? Not only that, but he also carried the, this, the so every city back in the day, uh, there was gates, if you wanted to enter the city, there were some gates that you had to open, and the gates were pretty tall. I don't know if you've seen movies where when they enter a city, they open the gates, and the gates are like maybe taller than the building, right, than this building right here. They're pretty tall. Okay, well, Samson, the Bible tells us that Samson in one of the cities, he broke the gate, and he put it on his back, and he carried it across to a mountain. This is in uh, Judges 16, verse 3. I just want to read you this so that you can have an understanding of the strength of Samson. It says, and he got up, took a hold of the doors of the city gate, okay? Together with the two doorposts, he tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders, and he carried them top to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Okay, so the gates were pretty heavy. If you look at ancient cities and you look at the gates that they had, the doors, you watch movies, the gates are humongous. If that gate fell on you, you're dead. You're done. You're carne, carne molida. I don't know how to really say it. You're done. You're done. But not for Samson. The spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. He was able to kill lions with his own hands. He was able to take on a thousand Philistines on his own. He was able to carry pretty big gates, right? He, his, his, uh, his strength was impressive. Would you agree with me that his strength was impressive? Okay. Samson is a picture of us, believe it or not, because when God comes upon you, you have the same strength as Samson. Samson is the picture of an empowered Christian. Just like Samson, when you are filled with God, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you also become empowered. Okay, I want you to say this with me. With the Holy Spirit, I am empowered. Okay, you are empowered. People think that the church is called to be weak. People think that we're called to be boring. People think that we're called to be useless. But in reality, God wants our church, God wants the church to be powerful, to be exciting, to be victorious overcomers. 
God wants you to be empowered so that whenever a spiritual lion comes your way, you're able to tear it in Jesus' name. Every time there's a spiritual attack against you, you're able to overcome in Jesus' name. At whatever second, at whatever time of the day, whenever the enemy comes at you, the Holy Spirit wants to empower you like Samson so that you can overcome as well. Just like how you're thinking, man, Samson is a pretty strong dude. Samson is a pretty big guy. Okay? Like there's strong people and there's Samson. God says, you're the same way. If you would just trust in me, if you would just allow me, if you were to consecrate yourself and set yourself apart and allow me to work in your life, you'd see the same strength in Samson in your life. Can I get an amen? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, John 14, 12. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do them. They'll do even greater things than these because I'm going to the father. When Jesus left. He says that the Holy Spirit's going to come. So he says, when the Holy Spirit comes, you're going to do the same works. You're going to do incredible works. Jesus did amazing miracles. And he says, you're going to be able to do that to a greater extent when the Holy Spirit comes into your life. So one thing for sure, I want to take a pause here. I want you to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. I want you to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. I want you to invite him not only for your life, but pray that your family receives the Holy Spirit. Pray that your mom receives the Holy Spirit. Pray that your sister, your brother, your good friend, the people in this church right now, that we may receive the Holy Spirit. That way he can empower you. That way he can fill you. I don't know if you've come depressed, but those lines of depression want to keep you depressed. But like Samson, you can tear these lines apart. I don't know if you've come suicidal. I don't know if you've come uh, with angry. I don't know if you've come very embittered. I don't know if you've come very sad. Whatever your situation is, these are lions coming your way. These are Philistines coming your way. And God wants to empower you to, to overcome these, uh, these attacks. God wants to empower you to overcome these situations in your life. He wants to make you as strong as Samson. Samson was a pretty cool dude, right? In the sense of his strength, he was pretty strong, right? He, you, you got that already, right? Samson was a pretty strong dude. He was a big dude. There was a problem with Samson. Although he was an awesome guy, he had one weakness, okay? Hugh Delilah, Hugh the girl, right? Samson was a womanizer. Okay, everyone say womanizer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he was a womanizer. The Bible tells us that Samson was this awesome person, but he also hung out a lot with a lot of prostitutes. He hung out with them. He was with them. He liked them. Women were Samson's weakness. And not only with just any woman. Okay, the Bible tells us that he, had, he had a taste for Philistine women. <laughs> Okay, if you're going to go for any girl, don't go for the wrong girl. And he went directly for the wrong girl. He went directly for the wrong people, right? The wrong person. He had a taste for Philistine women, especially Delilah. Okay? When Samson met Delilah, the Bible sort of describes it as love as first sight for him. Okay? He fell in love with Delilah. Can I want to read you this story in Judges 16, 4 to 5. Okay, now I want you to pay close attention to some of the words that I'm going to emphasize. Okay, Judges 16, 4 to 5. Okay, I'm going to emphasize some words, and I just want you to, I want this to stick with you. Okay, it says, sometime later, he fell in love. Okay, everyone say love. love. He fell in love. With a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. Okay. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, see if you can lure him. Okay, everyone say lure. Lure him into showing you his great, uh, in showing you his, the secret of his great strength so that we can overpower. Say overpower. Overpower, overpower him. So that we may tie him, say everyone say tie, tie, and subdue him. Everyone say subdue. 
okay? Love, lure, overpower, tie, subdue, okay? The, this is how the word lure is defined, okay? It means to tempt, to do something or to go somewhere, to make some, uh, I'm sorry, tempt, tempt someone to do something or, or to go somewhere, right? You're trying to get a person to do something, right? And the word subdue, of course, very simple English, right? Subdue, it means to overcome, to quiet, or bring under control, okay? Bring under control, okay? It's very clear that the Philistines didn't like Samson, okay? They were arch enemies. The, what stood between the Philistines and Israel was Samson. If they can just get rid of Samson, they can just conquer Israel and take the land for themselves. They hated Samson. They've tried many times to physically attack him, but it didn't work. Samson was too strong for them. But they found a weakness in, uh, they found a weakness in Samson with Delilah because, the Bible says, he loved her. Because he loved her. Okay? Now, we think about love at first sight and we think, man, this story is beautiful, whatever. Think, just think about, think about it for a second. Delilah did not have good intentions. Delilah was working with the Philistines to kill Samson. But Samson was too blind because he loved her. Because he loved Delilah. Okay? He fell in love with someone he wasn't supposed to fall in love with. She had bad intentions. She was working with the Philistines to destroy Samson. Please listen to what I'm about to say. Please listen to what I'm about to say, okay? Because the devil oftentimes hides behind something you love to attack you. Anything that you love that is not God or that, is, that aren't godly things, the devil we hi will, hide, will hide behind it. And you're going to open that door because you love whatever you're looking at. You see... The things that you love that are not from God are often sponsored by the devil. They're, 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 they're encouraged by Satan. And the devil just knows how to work his way in because you love that thing. You love watching. You love doing. You love partaking in certain habits and activities. And a lot of the times you ask yourself, why is it that I feel so depressed? Why do I feel so attacked? Why do I feel a certain way? Why, do, why am I always discouraged? It's because there's things that you're looking at. Right? That have Philistines attached. That's an open door for them to come into your life. You understand what I'm saying? There's certain things that you love. That you open the door for. Because you, they've made, it's made you blind. And it's an open door for the enemy to come and destroy. It's an open door for the enemy to come and lead you down a dark path. That you shouldn't have walked in in the first place. Okay? Delilah was able to find out Samson's secret through her seduction. She used Samson's love for her to her advantage so that he can be destroyed. The Bible tells us that he did this, she did this three times. Three times. Right? And she, she, she would always tell Samson, I know, you, you love me, right? I know you love me. And Samson's like, yeah, I do. I love you. She's like, you love me, right? I know, I know you love the way I look. You know, I, you know. I'm just, I know you're so in love with me. And Samson's like, yeah, man, that's true. I love you. I love you, girl. All the time, right? I love you, baby. <laughs> and every time she nagged him, Delato would always ask Samson, well, tell me what's your secret. Tell me how I can overcome you. And, of course, Samson lied, but it got to the point where he told her. But she was a he was able to... The reason she got that information was through her seduction. Okay, Judges 16, 15 to 17. Okay, Delilah was fed up with Samson. Okay, then she said to him, how can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and you haven't told me the secret of your great strength. Okay, 
We can go a little deeper into this. This is a tactic of manipulation, but that's for another, that's another preaching. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave, and I would become as weak as any other man. Samson's strength came from his dedication to God. Okay? His long hair again was proof of his commitment to God, his commitment to being holy, his commitment to setting himself apart from everyone else, apart from the world. Okay? And he confesses to Delilah his secret. He told her because he was seduced, because he loved Delilah. You see, the devil, what he wants to do, he knows the secret to your power. He knows the secret to how to get you to become weak, and that's this, to separate you from God. He knows if I can just separate my friend, if I can just separate this boy, if I can just separate this girl from God, I can overcome her. I can overcome him. And I know that I can't tempt him with anything else, but he studies you and he knows your weakness and he knows the things that you watch. He knows the things that you love. He knows the things that you go to. He knows the things that you spend time in. And he puts people, he's, he'll send things, he'll open doors so that you can open that door so the devil can come in and begin to destroy and begin to weaken and begin to overpower. Look, the devil, what he wants to do, he wants to tie you up. Because that's what he wanted to do with Samson. He wanted to tie him up and he wanted to subdue him. The devil wants to tie you up and he wants to control you so that you cannot cry out to God, so that you cannot cry out to him, so that you can't be filled with his presence okay and i end with this in judges 16 18 to 20 when delilah saw that he had told her everything she went she sent word to the rulers of the philistines come back once more he has told me everything so the rulers of the philistines returned with silver in their hands after putting him to sleep on her lap she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and she began to subdue him. She began to control him. And his strength left him. Okay, then look, look what happened. Samson, she says, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He woke up from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But it says, but he did not know that the Lord had left him. He did not know that the Lord left him already. Many times Samson tried to cheat death, but this time was for real. It was the sin. He knew from the beginning. He played with it too much to the point where he crossed the line. He lost. And it says that the, they took him. Philistines took him. They seized him. They gouged out his eyes, took him down to Gaza. They overpowered him. What I want to tell you today, and this is what I, I end with this, and I want you to understand this today. I need you to stop being seduced. God wants to offer you something better. And I need you to think of the things that you love in your life that are doors for lust. God won't set you free unless you re You need to start denying Delilah. Even if she's enticing, even if she, the sin, there are certain things in your life that you have to cut off if you want to receive the life of God, if you want to receive the life of Jesus, if it's a certain friend that you have to let go, God, you have to cut ties. Because you're called to be Samson. You're called to be someone powerful. You're called to be someone to bring salvation, to bring restoration. You're, you're, called, you're called. You are a special person in God's eyes. You are a Samson in God's eyes. Don't let the enemy play with your weakness. We all stand up to our feet. Again, remember this. Anything that you love, anything that you love that is not God and that is not of the things of God, 
the devil will always hide behind because he knows that you it ties you it bound it it, uh, it binds you if you feel like man I'm addicted I'm addicted that's in my mind it's because you love certain things that you're watching you love shows you love TV shows you love it listen church there's someone better there is someone else that you can love and his name is Jesus you can make the decision today you can say, I'm going to stop loving the things of the world. I'm going to stop loving pornographies and addictions and habits. And today, I choose to love Jesus because he loved me. Choose to love Jesus instead of the Philistines coming in. Keep future. Stop loving things of the world because you're called to be Samson. I renounce. I renounce pornography. Something that has tied you for so long. Something that has tied you for so long. And we renounce, we renounce, we renounce. Of being seduced by Delilah. In Jesus' homes. Renounce. If you want to be set free, you need to renounce. If you want to see the move of God in your life, you have to renounce. Your heart has to say, God, I renounce. I renounce. I renounce Delilah. In Jesus' name. The freedom of Jesus is here. In Jesus' name. We renounce Delilah. We renounce the life. We choose to fall in love with you, Jesus. Your addictions. Renounce your problems. Renounce your depression. I renounce. I renounce. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
your hands. Raise your hands. Freedom of God. All right in Jesus' name, Father. Freedom. Free place. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Leads in Jesus' name. The fire of the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Uplift the curses. We cancel the curses in Jesus' name. We cancel the curses in Jesus' name. Freedom. Freedom. Come on, church, you gotta renounce every sin in Jesus' name. 